Hi everybody, Music Theory 1. This is video number 9, Seventh Chord Identification. In our last video, we talked about identifying triads. Triads are going to make up most of the chords we see in the music that we look at. The chords that we see that aren't triads are likely going to be seventh chords. This video is going to follow the same format as the last. We're going to introduce all the different types of seventh chords that we have in Western music, talking about the intervals that we find in them. We're going to be relating these seventh chords to our triads, and so if you're still a little unfamiliar or unsure on how to make those triads, you might want to review that video and review the different intervals that show up in our different triads before you go on to this one. How do we know we're dealing with the seventh chord? Well, we can have, they have a couple of important qualities. First, a seventh chord consists of four different notes. We remember that our triads are made up of three notes. Our seventh chords add an extra note, and so they have four. Like our triads, we can arrange our seventh chords into stacked thirds. They are tertian chords, chords built on the third. And so even if when we see the notes in a piece of music, they are sort of shuffled up or in some different order, if we can arrange them in stacked thirds, we'll be happy to call them a seventh chord. When we talk about the qualities of seventh chords, we're going to be describing them by combining a triad that we already know with a seventh above the root. And so that's how we're going to be describing all of these, and we'll get to all those different qualities in just a second. And finally, just like our triads, the four notes of a seventh chord have names. The first three are familiar from our triads, they're the same. We call the lowest note the root. When we stack our chord in ascending thirds, the lowest note is the root. The next pitch is the third, the next pitch is still the fifth, and the final pitch, the top pitch of our seventh chord when stacked in ascending thirds, is the seventh. Okay, let's talk about how we're going to find the quality of these different seventh chords. Finding the quality of the seventh chord is going to be very similar to finding the quality of a triad. We are going to rely on the intervals. The intervals are going to tell us what kind of seventh chord we have, and the different intervals are going to give our different seventh chords very unique sounds. They're going to sound very different from each other because they have different thirds, different fifths, and different sevenths built up inside the chord. And so when we're calculating intervals, we know we're always going to start in the same place. We're going to start in the key signature of the bottom note. That's going to tell us what type of interval we have. My bottom note in this seventh chord is A, and so I'm going to be thinking about A major, and I know that key signature has three sharps, F, C, and G. When I'm identifying the quality of a seventh chord, the first thing I want to do is figure out what type of triad I have on the bottom of my seventh chord. In other words, I want to figure out what the interval between the root and the third is, and the root and the fifth, and figure out which triad those intervals match up with. Let's look at this one. I have A to C sharp. I ask myself, is C sharp in the A major scale? Yes, it is. A major has a C sharp in it, and so that means it's a major third. What about the E? Is E natural in the A major scale? Well, the only accidentals I'm expecting to see are F, C, and G, and so yes, E is in the A major scale. A major third and a perfect fifth. What kind of triad do we have on the bottom here? Major third plus perfect fifth is a major triad. Okay, so we have figured out what kind of triad we have on the bottom in our lower three notes of our seventh chord. Now I need to figure out what type of seventh I have above my root. A to G sharp. And so I'll ask myself, is that G sharp in the A major scale? And the answer is yes. G sharp is one of those three sharps. That means this is a major seventh. I've figured out what type of seventh I have above my root. I figured out what type of triad I have on the bottom. These are always the things I'm going to look at when I'm trying to identify the quality of a seventh chord. And so the last thing we have to do is give this one a name. When we have a seventh chord that has a major triad on bottom and a major seventh above the root, we are going to call it a major seventh chord. This is a major seventh chord. A major triad on the bottom, a major seventh above the root. This is A major seven. And so I'm going to you can see the way I've written it below major seventh there. I use a capital M and a seven to indicate the major seventh chord. Let's look at some different kinds of seventh chords with some different intervals. 
Here we go. I have changed one of the notes in my chord. You'll see G sharp has changed to G natural. And so I'm going to go through the same process that I went through last time. My bottom three notes have not changed, and so the intervals are still a major triad. I'm still going to figure out what type of triad I have on bottom, and then I need to figure out what type of seventh I have above my root. I used to have a G sharp, but now I've changed it to a G natural. I've made that top note closer to the root. I've made the G closer to the A. Made my major seventh one half step smaller. What type of interval is one half step smaller than a major seventh? a minor seventh. We have a minor seventh above our root and a major triad on the bottom. This is not a major seventh, of course, the intervals are different. This chord has a different name. This is the major minor seventh. A major minor seventh chord has a major triad on bottom with a minor seventh above the root. It's also commonly called a dominant seventh chord because it tends to show up on scale degree 5 in our major and minor keys, and so we might also hear that word with some frequency, the dominant seventh. Either way, the intervals are the same, major triad on bottom, minor seventh on top. I've written this as A7, that's typically how I'm going to abbreviate when I'm talking about a major minor seventh chord. No M's in that one, just A7 to tell us that we have a dominant seventh chord built on A. Let's keep going and look at some more seventh chords. Here we go, I've changed another note. We used to have a C sharp in this chord, now we have a C natural. You'll notice that I have kept the seventh the same, it's still a minor seventh up top, but I have to figure out what flavor of triad I have on the bottom. A to E is still a perfect fifth, but A to C natural, what type of third? We no longer have the major third, the third from the A major scale, we've changed that C sharp to a C natural. We've made the interval one half step smaller. We move that C sharp one step closer to A. What type of third is a half step smaller than a major third? It's a minor third. And if we have a triad with a minor third and a perfect fifth, we have a minor triad. So now we have a different kind of seventh chord, a new pairing of triad and seventh. We have a seventh chord that has a minor triad on bottom and a minor seventh above the root. How are we going to name this chord? This is our minor seventh chord. Minor triad plus minor seventh equals our minor seventh chord. You can see I've written it A with a lowercase m7, A minor seven, that's how I'll be notating that. This one, a minor triad with a minor seventh above. Let's keep going, we've got a couple more to look at. I just keep messing with this chord. Once again, I've changed a note. We used to have an E natural in this chord. I have now changed it to an E flat. And so again, the seventh hasn't changed. We have another seventh chord that has a minor seventh above the root, but the triad on the bottom does. We still have a minor third above the root, but now we have an E flat above the root. What type of fifth do we have now? We used to have a perfect fifth, but we've moved it a little bit closer to the root. We've made the interval a little bit smaller. When we take a perfect fifth and make it a half step smaller, we have a diminished fifth. And the triad with a diminished fifth and a minor third we know that is the diminished triad. Another seventh chord, this one with a diminished triad on bottom and a minor seventh above the root. How are we going to describe this chord? This is our half diminished seventh chord. Half diminished seventh. It's only half diminished because the triad is diminished, but the seventh is not. The seventh is minor. We can abbreviate this chord using the circle we use for diminished intervals and diminished triads with a slash through it. When we draw that little slash through the circle, we're talking about a half diminished seventh chord. Half diminished seven has a diminished triad and a minor seventh. Let's see if we can find our one final seventh chord. I've changed my last note, which is the seventh in this chord. I kept the diminished triad A, C, E flat on the bottom, but now I've got a G flat above. G natural was a minor seventh, but I've made that interval one half step smaller. What type of seventh is one half step smaller than a minor seventh? That is a diminished seventh. We now have a chord that has both a diminished triad and a diminished seventh. Based on our last chord, you might be able to guess a name for this one. This is the fully diminished seventh chord. 
our half diminished seven only has one part of it diminished, the triad. It has a minor seventh, but the fully diminished seventh chord has both parts diminished, both the triad and the seventh. We can abbreviate this using that circle that we'll be using both for diminished intervals and diminished triads. A fully diminished seventh. This is what it looks like. Here they all are together. A major seven and a major triad. That's our major seventh chord. A minor seven over a major triad. That's our major minor seventh chord. A minor seven over our minor triad. That is our minor seventh chord. A minor 7 over our diminished triad, that's our half diminished 7th chord, and a diminished 7th over our diminished triad, our fully diminished 7th chord. We're going to be running into all these different flavors of 7th chord throughout all different types of music. We want to be comfortable knowing which intervals and which chords show up in which case, and being able to identify them as quickly as we can. We are going to have to have a good understanding of these interval structures, and so make sure you write down in your notes which intervals and which chords go with which seventh, so that when it comes time to look at them, we've got a pretty good grasp on which seventh we are looking at. That is the end of video 9, seventh chord identification. These past two videos, we've looked at all the different chords that are going to make up most of the music we examine throughout our music theory studies. We looked at all our triads in the previous video, and now all our seventh chords in this video. It seems like a lot of information, but as we start putting it into practice and using it more and more, we're going to get more and more comfortable with these different collections of intervals, these different arrangements into the chords that we look at. If you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, I will see you guys in class. Thanks for watching.